Good morning, good morning, good morning. And I know you're wondering, where is Sorel? Well, today, Sorel is on a plane on his way back to Georgia. So I get to create Money Matters and Monday Matters and Money Matters. And we get to start the week in a powerful way with Dr. Gupta. Thank you for coming back, Dr. Gupta. It is so great to have you Thank on you. Mondays. Thank you for having me again. <laughs> All right. So, Dr. Gupta, I have a question for you. Oh, actually, I'm going to take the opportunity to ask Andrea a question since she's here. <laughs> Great to have you back, Andrea. Andrea, I have a question for you. Please do tell. What did one hot dog tell the other hot dog? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, do you? I don't know. Come on, catch up. <laughs> oh. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> They're terrible. They're terrible. My daughter told me this one. That was hers. This. <laughs> You have to share these things. They're just wonderful. <laughs> well, good morning, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Daily Huddle. Thank you for being here. Thank you for opening your calendar. Thank you for moving things around. It is an honor for me to be here every other Monday or every Monday or every day to create a conversation to start your day. We say around here that the way you start your day gives you the rest of your day creates the tone for the rest of the day. And the way that you live each day gives you the rest of your life. Something about today matters, <laughs> you know? Today matters. Today gives you the rest of your life. So before we get started with this amazing conversation, what is the internet hiding from you? And since today's money matters, and Monday matters, and money matters, I want you to hear in the context of what's preventing you from making the money you want, or what's preventing you from managing the money that you have either creating it or managing it. And today we have a phenomenal guest speaker who's gonna give us a sense of what is the internet hiding from you? Before we get started, we're gonna prime ourselves to be here and to be present. Andrea, good morning. Where are you and what time is it? I am right where I need to be, Gio, which is right here and the time right now. Love it. Thank you, Only Andrea. Only time. <laughs> Thank you. You're here and the time is now. It's kind of quite inescapable. Dr. G, good morning, Dr. Gupta. Two questions for you. One thing you're grateful for and how are you? I am just the way I say I am. And <laughs> I love that. I'm catching up with you guys, okay? <laughs> yes. I am grateful for the energetic, positive people that I am blessed with around me, who keep me going every day. Thank you for being here, Dr. Gupta. So, Dr. Gupta, thank you for being here. Let's create today's conversation. So, what is the internet hiding from you? So, I will not, full disclosure, I am no expert in this matter. Okay, I'm definitely not an expert in money matters, but this is a conversation that has come up more and more in my interactions with parents, with teachers and professionals, when I'm talking to them about screen time and the internet and what we are doing on internet and clickbaits and how to recognize catfish and what does AI mean and what do algorithms do to us? So. I'm going to try and summarize just the tip of the iceberg of all of that over the next 10 some minutes to help us understand that we are leaving our footprints on the internet. Now, are we leaving footprints in the right places? Are those footprints going to come back and haunt us? Are they going to be encroaching on our time, attention and money, okay? So let's get started. We are all familiar with the term AI, 
artificial intelligence. And we, we like to think of AI as this some fancy robot in the background that is doing something behind the computer and manipulating our brain. Well, AI is not a robot, okay? It, there are robots that work on AI, but generally speaking, AI, artificial intelligence, there is nothing artificial about it. And it's, it's basically an algorithm or several different algorithms that work in the background that filter out content for us and present to us our personalized results. Okay. We think that algorithms are a new phenomena, but in some capacity or another, the algorithms have been in existence for several years now. They are getting smarter and smarter in knowing our personality, our likes, and our dislikes. AI is dynamic. It is changing all the time. It is evolving. It is capable of doing things that we don't expect and it is capable of learning, okay? It's capable of learning who we are and what we might like. What we search on our browsers, whether it is Google, Yahoo, MSN, AOL, what we post on social media, what we like, what we comment on, the links that we click on, all of these bits and pieces of data are getting compiled in big servers in the background. And there is a chance that a lot of this information is being sold or auctioned to the highest bidder who benefits from having this personal information of us. I'll give you an example. If I was to search the term clouds on Google or Yahoo or MSN, and at the same time, if you were to search clouds, then you might get entirely different results in your search. I might get something about clouds in the sky, and the other person might get something about iCloud or a song with the word cloud. Sounds pretty benign, huh? How does it matter and who cares what you are getting in your search result? Well, it gets a little bit complicated when algorithms start suggesting who we might like to make friends on social media. What movie we might like to watch on Netflix based on our prior search history what foods we might like to order, which political party we might like to support. Is climate change real or fake based on what the algorithm thinks I think about climate change and so on. So if I'm the type of person who is worried about climate change, I will see content that reinforces my views, my opinions and my beliefs about climate change. <coughs> Excuse me. Over time, the algorithms have figured us out so well that we get surrounded by something called the filter bubble. The filter bubble, the highly personalized information that we want to see, not necessarily what we need to see. We start believing that what we think about a certain issue is exactly the correct thing because that is what we see all the time on our side of the internet we are not exposed to the opposing view because it gets completely filtered out. At the end, we find ourselves surrounded by people who think like us, behave like us, talk like us, look like us, and vote like us. We develop a bit of an intolerance to the opposing view. We have over time heard a lot about how the algorithms the filter bubbles and bots have played a huge role in changing the fate of many important world events. I have come to realize this now. For every piece of news, there are two versions floating on the internet, a version that we like and the other one that the people outside of our filter bubble like. We only get to see our version and there is no way to tell Giovanni if it is the true version or the fake version of the news. Something else to think about here. Someone, let's, let's assume someone knocks on our door and tells us that they are from a government agency and they would like to see details of our recent vacations, our upcoming trips, our family photos. We would be a little skeptical of sharing that personal information with them, won't we? I wonder what makes us so comfortable sharing all of this information and more freely on the internet where it can be accessed by everyone, anywhere. Technology has grown capable of spying on us and 
Coming to money matters, technology is capable of monetizing all of our movements, our opinions, our relationships, and our tastes. Eric Smith is, he was the previous CEO of Google. He once said in an interview about artificial intelligence, he said, I don't think Siri and Alexa will kill us one night, but they might become our child's best friend. He was also told by a student about social media at one point. What makes it so dangerous? The union of boredom and anonymity in social media is dangerous, especially at the intersection of addiction and envy when it comes to teenagers and adolescents. So let's learn a little bit about different types of algorithms that work behind the scenes on search engines and the ones that work on social media. So when we are browsing search engines, let's say Google, Yahoo, MSN, AON, we are doing it in the privacy of our home and our office without anyone knowing supposedly what we are searching for, or at least we like to think that way, right? We search about life issues, jobs, money matters, education, relationships, children, behavior, right? This is who we are when no one is watching us. This is the data that gets fed into the search engine algorithms. This is our real personality, who we really are behind the scenes, behind closed doors. Now, on the other hand, with social media, we are careful about what we like, what we post, what we comment, because the entire world would be able to see what our opinions on a certain matter are, what our interests and likes are. So this is our version or the face that we want to put forward publicly. Even though we might not genuinely like something that we are clicking on, we still do it because that is what we want everybody else to think of us. So the social media algorithms interpret this as who we are. And then they feed us content that they think we will like. But which algorithm is more accurate? The one that is working behind the scenes in closed doors or the ones that is working on the social media that, that is giving us content that it thinks we like us. <clears throat> I was recently talking to a mother of a high schooler in Philadelphia. She approached me because she wanted me to talk to the students at the high school about the impact of excessive internet use and what it is doing to the health of children in that school. So I asked her, give me, give me an example of what is, what is happening on the internet, what is happening on social media. And she gave me a, an intense example, a startling example that I, I'll share with you. And without naming the specific social media platform, Giovanni, she, she told me that middle school and high school girls are posting pictures of themselves in various states of undress on social media platforms. And the boys from their school are commenting on how fat you are or how ugly you are. And so there, there is this, teenage girls are developing eating disorders, body image issues. They are going down this rabbit hole of severe mental health crisis. There is a completely deep, dark side of the internet that a lot of us are not familiar with. And we have to try and educate our children about the, the other side of the internet. We have to save them from that. There are predators on the internet who are ready to harm us and our children who are ready to, who, who are after our money. And that's what brings me to the next concept of catfish. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the word catfish or the term catfish. Simply put, it would be fraudsters, online fraudsters. They come in a variety of flavors. You would find catfish on virtual dating websites. Fake businesses can be catfish. Thieves can be catfish. And you can actually have catfish in person. So how do you spot a catfish or an online fraudster? How do you educate your children to be mindful of not giving away too much personal information or paying anybody online because they might be a catfish. So these are some of the features of a catfish. They ask a lot of personal questions that are deflective. Um, they, they are deflective when it comes to themselves, but they will ask you a lot of questions. Things 
will escalate to love very quickly with catfish. They will make up excuses not to meet in person. Their pictures might seem too perfect. And they will tell you elaborate stories of why they need money. And if you don't send them money straight away, they might get desperate, they might get very persistent and a little bit direct too. So <clears throat> I, I saw a patient a couple months back in the context of her endocrine concerns. And in the process of getting more history from her, her mother described this incident to me, which made me look into the issue of catfish a little bit more. So my patient is a 15 year old adolescent. She made friends with somebody on a social media platform and that somebody was an 18 year old young man. They started getting friendly. They started sharing details with each other. He started asking questions about her family, about bank accounts, about finances, about where she lives, what her address is. When things started getting a little bit out of hand, that is when my patient informed her mother about these incidents. They, the family was mindful enough and smart enough to include cybersecurity police of their local division and had them check it out. It turned out that that 18 year old man was not actually an 18 year old man. He was a 45 year old man posing as an 18 year old man. So there is, there is a lot going on out there on the internet that we have to be careful about. The, some basic rules in when it comes to avoid being catfished or scammed are to always meet a person in a public place, okay? And to never send money to somebody that you have met just online. Now, the last concept that I want to introduce today is about metaverse, okay? This whole talk about metaverse makes me nervous. The metaverse are words which are more satisfying than the current word. In, in that word, we are richer, more handsome, more beautiful, more powerful, and faster. So in some years, people might choose to spend more time with their goggles on in the metaverse than spending more time in the boring real world. Giovanni, our culture is changing. It's changing very fast. We have a way of turning everything into trends. Once there were causes, now there are trends. Once there were thought leaders, now there are influencers. We have to understand that trends are transient. Trends are transient, causes are permanent. You are trending is a new way of complimenting somebody or maybe sounding an alarm. Now, have you heard of a search engine for your face, Giovanni? For my face? A search urge engine for my face? No. No, so if somebody uploads your photograph on that search engine, then all of your photographs that ever exist on the internet can be found. Did you know that? No, I had no idea. So there is this search engine called PIM Eyes. For $29.99 a month, it offers a potentially dangerous superpower from the world of science fiction. The ability to search for a face by finding obscure photographs of your face on the internet. So how does this search engine work? You upload a photo of the face and then you get a grid of similar faces and where they appear on the internet. Even if the person was wearing sunglasses or a mask, or they were just in the background in the photo, like you're on a vacation where you just happen to be a part of a crowd. It could be perceived as a stalker wear by design. So it's, things are getting a little bit complicated. Technology is making a lot of advancement. We cannot escape technology. We just have to be mindful of the footprints that we are leaving on the internet. We are starting to develop a lot of understanding of this, but we don't know a whole lot of solutions other than being careful about click baits. Okay, I want to wrap up this section by showing you a photograph. Let me pull it up. 
And let me see if you recognize this person. <coughs> Do you know who she is? No. Your business. Who is she? Her name is Desdemona, and she is a robot. Oh, the robot. A robot who looks like a human, and believe it or not, she is the lead vocalist in the band that has been formed by her creator. Wow. <laughs> and she has fans and she has followers and people are commenting on, <laughs> oh goodness, goodness. Wow. What, what the, this is fascinating. And in many ways, it's some, everything you are sharing with us today are, are, are such a concern. I think for anyone who is listening, it's like, where, where could, where, where are, it's two, it's two things. It's like, goodness, look where we're at. It's no longer like, look where we're going. It's look where we're at at this point. We have reached a place in our life, human history, where it is truly concerning where we're at right now. And it also poses the question, goodness, where we're, are we going with all this? And given that we are so concerned, I am so concerned with my daily activities, with my own, with my own issues, family, money, health, that it, the, the internet or my smart device seems like a scape, like a healthy way to scape with how real life is. And yet it's twisting me and twisting people upside down and completely disconnecting me, disconnecting us from our superpower. The, is, real, the real superpower we have. Go ahead. That is very true, Giovanni. When you said, what is it that we are escaping from? And what is it that the internet or the devices or the content that we access doing to our brain? I think it is making a lot of us and hedonic. Okay. We know what hedonia is. Hedonia is pleasure. And hedonia is reduced capacity to feel pleasure. And based on what I have found in my research, there was a study done, unfortunately, in adolescents on anhedonia. And it was found that adolescents who are spending excessive amount of time on video games are highly at risk for developing anhedonia. They do not find the normal real world interesting anymore because they get so much pleasure from the video games. And after a certain point, they do not find pleasure in that as well. And they need something more to get the same amount of pleasure. And that is where the risk for substance use and drug abuse comes in. The content developers know how our brain works. They know the, the type of content that will make us click. They know what should be the headings that will make us go for them and then plant cookies on our internet browser so that even after we have logged out and closed the windows, they are still able to track our online activities through the cookies. They know what will keep us glued to our devices so that they can get our time and attention. And then, like I said earlier, monetize it, auction it to the highest bidder who will then feed us advertisements for products that they think we like. So if we are not in the market for a certain product, but if we are shown an image of a certain product, and for a certain second, we might pause and think, hmm, I don't have it, but it sounds like a pretty good thing to possess. Let me take a look into it. And there is a chance that if 1,000 people click on that link, maybe 10 would actually end up buying it. Hmm. Yes, absolutely. And uh, it, it, one, of the, one of the things I've noticed for myself, and 
And it's real challenging for me. And this is my world. This is the, the world of, of understanding my brain, human behavior. But it is really challenging for me to go against what my brain wants. There is what I want, right? There is the joy I want for my life, the habits I want for my life. Then there is the kind of communication and relationships I want for my life. And there is an entirely different world what my brain wants. And, and, and it's, it's difficult to separate it. There, this is what my brain wants. And this is what I consciously want for me. And my brain, absent of having conversations that like this ones and having exercises like and practices like the ones that you're going to do at Reconnect in Nashville, which we should talk about that a little bit. Um, absent of having conversations like that, I will be in many ways a victim of my brain. Mm -hmm. And I won't know why is my life not working? I just won't know. I'm reading the right things. I had the right way of looking at life, yet my brain is going in a completely different direction. And I think that that's something that you and Tara do remarkably well at Reconnect. In well, th and this time, and this occasion is going to be Nashville. So if you're listening to this, you need to go to Nashville on Saturday. Would you mind telling us a little bit about Reconnect uh, that's going to happen in Nashville? Yes, absolutely, Giovanni. So Reconnect Nashville is a three-hour event on Saturday, September 24th from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. right here in Nashville. Tara and I lead the event and we dig deep into empowering our audience with the magic of life technology balance. Even though in the last 20 or so minutes, I have outlined the deep dark side of the internet, it doesn't mean that we have to stay away from the internet. We can't survive. We can't survive without technology. Technology is here to stay, it empowers us, but what we do with that power is what shapes the world around us. So at Reconnect Nashville, we dig deep into how to find joy, health, and efficiency. How do we talk to our brain? How do we manipulate our brain rather than letting the brain manipulate us? And we walk away transformed. We walk away full of joy, full of vigor, full of a new sense of restarting and reclaiming our time and attention. So if you are open to a weekend trip to Nashville, come and see me, Tara, and Giovanni this Saturday, September 24th at View Studio in Nashville for Reconnect. Well, yes, one of the things that I found, thank you for sharing that, and the way to, to learn more about and to register, you need to go to uh, uh, reconnect.expert, www.reconnect.expert. And one of the things when I attended the first time here in Atlanta, and we were so lucky to have you here in Atlanta, it just opened up a world. One of the things that I, I really got for myself, and it, and it settled me in a constant journey of, of understanding how my brain works. And it, these are just questions that are not often in front of me, right? It's not often... What is the difference between joy and pleasure? It's some, somewhat like my brain, I'm, or I am always looking for, to, have, to be happy in some degree or to have pleasure. And, and there's just completely different things, right? With, if I'm surfing through the internet, I, I get a, a shot of what you guys were saying, a neurotransmitter called dopamine. And, and all of a sudden I'm like, I'm happy. I'm like, okay, I'm seeing pictures I like and sunset, sunrise, whatever. I'm happy. But at the same time, I'm going to fail to pronounce that word that you said. And what is that word that, that you were? Anhedonia. Anhedonia. At the same time, I am losing my ability to feel pleasure in my life, to, to feel satisfied in my life at the same time. And this is happening simultaneously without me knowing. And because I work with my devices and the devices are a big part of my work life, 
I, I was able to tell prior to reconnect that I was reaching a place into my life where I wasn't experiencing joy. I wasn't experiencing fulfillment, better say, of life. And I couldn't phantom why. All the, thing, all the things are in the right place until I started understanding a little bit more about the brain. So reconnect that expert is really the place to be. I can't wait to be there and be with you guys. So thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Gupta, for being here, for sharing a little bit about the world that the internet is hiding, the impact that it has on our brain, on our children's brain, on our professional life, on our ability to not be distracted and our ability to make money and, and our ability to live a great life. So thank you for bringing all of that today, Dr. Jay. Gupta. What are your last words for today? Our last words for today are technology empowers us. I said this earlier too, we have to remember this. Technology empowers us. What, what like they said in the Spider-Man movie, with great powers come great responsibilities. So what we do with that power is what is going to shape us and the world around us. So let's be mindful and let's take a pause and think that the technology that we have already, is that enough? Is that more than enough? Do we really need more of that in our life? Mm, beautiful. Thank you for bringing that spin to the possibility of with great power comes great responsibility because I do have a lot of power with the technology I have. I'm just not aware of the responsibility for that. Thank you, thank you for that. Thank you all for being here. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you, Ms. Gupta. Thank you, Mrs. Gupta. Thank you, Rose. Great to see you, Rose. Great to see you here, Rose. Virtue. Thank you all for being here. And those of you who are on Facebook, thank you for being here. Today, I'm gonna close this up with our seven, eight, tenants to have a great life take charge of technology have a great skin and sexy body the first one is love love always stress less it's only one life laugh out loud stress your chicks eat more plant base get closer to the trees hug the trees eat the trees let the animals run run every day move every single day 10 minutes in the morning 10 minutes in the afternoon but it's got to be every day a little a, li a quick walk you're going to love it and always, always give, give everything you got, give your resentment away, give your love away, give your jealousy away. Just keep giving it all away. Life is energy. I feel like I'm missing one. What am I missing? Either way, whichever one that is, check move yourself. your body, move your body, move, move. I did say move, okay. Andrea, I did say move, move your body, your run body. every day. But finally, like Dr. Ogando likes to say, check yourself before you wreck yourself. Thank you, everybody. See you tomorrow for health and vitality matters. Bye-bye. Thank you.